This is the Facebook logo. This is a pile of tobacco. Why? Because at the recent Facebook hearings, we've heard a lot of this. Facebook is just like big tobacco, pushing a product that they know is harmful to the health of young people. Facebook has taken Big Tobacco's playbook. The tobacco industry. Big tobacco. Big tobacco. All right, so you get it. Members of Congress really like this comparison, especially around the impacts and harms of social media on kids. And if you look back at the hearings of the 1990s, where the chief executives of the biggest tobacco companies testified, you can see why it's a handy comparison, but as I'll explain, an imperfect one. Do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I believe nicotine is not addictive, yes. Congressman, Cigarettes and nicotine clearly do not meet the classic definitions of addiction. I don't believe that nicotine or our products are addictive. I believe nicotine is not addictive. And here we are more than 25 years later. We certainly do not want our products to be addictive. So I, I, I disagree with calling our, our product uh, addictive. I also think that's not how we build products. In our recent Wall Street Journal Facebook file series, my colleagues revealed internal company documents that show that the company knows its products cause harm including to kids. Okay, back to tobacco. Now, while it's a convenient analogy, in some ways, it goes up in smoke. For one, the tobacco companies spent decades concealing their research, lying and covering up what they knew. And even more important, social media does not cause lung cancer. The truth is that cigarettes are the single most dangerous consumer product ever sold. That's former Democratic Congressman Henry Waxman. He led the big tobacco hearings in the 1990s. This is him now. So tobacco and social media. What do you make of this comparison? There's nothing good about tobacco. It's the only legal product we have that we know that kills and, and makes people sick and has no redeeming value. Social media has pluses and some big minuses. Facebook spokesman Joe Osborne said in a statement, it's an absurd comparison. Social media helps people connect and small businesses thrive. But looking at how lawmakers came up with regulation for this box may give us some clues about how they might handle this box. But to do that, we have to look at the similarities between the two. The first we can call hooking for profit. The more addicted you are to smoking, the more money tobacco companies make. The more time you spend scrolling Facebook or Instagram and thus consuming ads, the more money Facebook makes. In the 1990s, the tobacco companies denied adjusting nicotine levels to encourage addiction. The claim that Philip Morris secretly adds nicotine during the manufacturing process to keep smokers addicted is false. And here we are in 2021. But I want to drill down on this addictive element. But isn't part of your business model to have more eyeballs for a longer amount of time engaged using your services? <laughs> Respectfully, Senator, that's not that's not actually how we build our products. Then there's the not sharing of research. You're the chief executive officer. You, what reason could you not give us this research if it uh, if it's been conducted? I have I have no problem giving you any material we have if it's not in some way involved in uh, in lit active litigation at this time. And here we are today. Will you disclose all of the reports, all of the findings? Will you commit? To full disclosure. Yeah, I know that we have released a number of the reports and we are looking to find ways to re release more of this research. Um, I want to be clear that this research is not a bombshell. It's not causal research. This research is a bombshell. Now again, the tobacco companies hid years of scientific evidence of health impacts of their product. In Facebook's case, the company is in early days of understanding the impacts of its digital tools, and it has already shared some information. And that's perhaps the biggest link being made between Big Tobacco and Facebook, hooking the kids early. Though I guess you could say that of other companies, like junk food. Maybe we should have done this whole video about Facebook and junk food. The most famous tobacco targeting to kids? American Medical Association found that 91% of the children three through six could match Joe with a camel cigarette, which means, Mr. Johnson, that Joe Camel was as well known as Mickey Mouse. Do you still maintain that Joe Camel cartoons are not targeted towards children? Um, Congressman Seiner, when, when... It's a simple it's question, Mr. Johnson. Do you contend, you do contend that it's not targeted towards children? 
it clearly and absolutely, right. but I can Mr. explain Johnson, to you. I would like the Facebook documents published by the Wall Street Journal show that the company has been thinking of more ways to engage children. One slide reads, leverage playdates to increase growth slash retention. In her testimony to Congress, Frances Haugen, the Facebook whistleblower who gathered the documents that informed the journal series, made her perspective clear. They have to make sure that, that the next generation is just as engaged with Instagram as the current one. Um, and the way they'll do that is by making sure that children establish habits before they have good self-regulation. By hooking kids. By hooking kids. The Facebook spokesman said companies that operate in a highly competitive space, including the Wall Street Journal, make efforts to appeal to younger generations. Since those big tobacco hearings in the 90s, we've seen regulation and settlements that have limited the use and marketing of these, especially to kids. The Master Settlement Agreement of 1998 banned advertising targeted at those younger than 18 and banned the use of cartoons like Joe Camel. Ultimately, in 2009, the FDA was given the right to regulate tobacco products, including the levels of nicotine. A very similar set of parallel regulations have to be put on the books in order to protect uh, children from Instagram, from social media, in the same way that our nation put laws on the books to protect children against big tobacco. That's Democratic Senator Ed Markey. He has drafted the Kids Internet Design and Safety Act, or the Kids Act. It aims to create new protections for users under 16. They get to the heart of what's addicting about social media. We have to ban push notification. We have to ban autoplay. Um, we have to make sure that the algorithms uh, can't be set so that it's deliberately playing games with the minds of children in our country uh, up to the age of 16. Then there's the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPPA 2.0, which is also backed by Markey and has gained bipartisan support. It would extend the current privacy protections to 13 through 15 year olds, ban targeted advertising to kids, and more. Beyond protecting the children, others argue for regulating social media content algorithms and adjusting Section 230, the law that shields online platforms from being liable for harmful content posted on their sites. But even if Congress agrees on all that, it will still have to contend with lobbyists, as it did with Big Tobacco. Facebook and other social media companies, they can buy just about every lobbyist in Washington, D.C. But when the subject of children, of teenagers, is raised, they're in a position which is indefensible. The Facebook spokesman said that the company is in support of regulation. It's time for Congress to act. This all now sits with the lawmakers. And if tobacco regulation is our guide, it could be with them for a long time. I reek of tobacco.